in, in the Twin CPP network. So that is currently not supported, but it's an effort that is uh, sort of being uh, going on on the uh, Twin CPP as we get it into the standards. Then uh, another sort of scenario for the uh, Twin CPP operator would be the transport network. So converting your own network into IPv6. This really doesn't show up anywhere for the users. So basically the user sees still the same old IPv4 connectivity as, as always. Because all the traffic from the base station all the way up to the PDN gateway is tunneled. Uh, uh, or, or the user traffic is tunneled between those points. So basically what the user experiences is normal IPv4 connectivity, but it can be carried over IPv6. And that, that has been sort of available for operators already from previous seven. And uh, of course, there are these cases that uh, I if your network is visited by IPv4 only uh, operator, cu operator customers, then you need the dual stacking in your, some of your nodes, uh, such as uh, HCSN. But, uh, that's sort of uh, natural that you still need to be able to communicate with the rest of the world, although you are deploying IPv6 in your own network. Yeah. So, so basically, what, what are the reasons why you would like to do this? Is It's the, quite a much the same as, as for the DS Lite case in the Comcast case. So basically, you get your IPv4 pool into better use for example, if, if you need, uh, if you are running out of net 10 addresses, or uh, you can simplify a bit your network management if you are you have multiple layers of NATs in your network and, and stuff like that. They, they are the sort of same uh, arguments that we get from the uh, fixed side of, on the Comcast case that they, they had a multiple layer of NATs and they want to get rid of that with, with the dual stack light. So, so basically, uh, th this is the reasons why, why you what would like to do. And then there is the question about uh, how, how you actually get an uh, overlap in R uh, this RFC 1918 space on the user plane, because it's the same as Comcast. They wanted to uh, even have more overlapping uh, address spaces between the users, so basically you can get the same functionality using the, the sort of dual stack extra light solution uh, proposed in IETF or gateway initiated dual stack light, which are just the variations from the original dual stack light specification, except that now it's network who is uh, creating the tunnel from the PDN gateway onwards to some other component in, in the network. So that's the basic difference. So, what basically are sort of recommendations currently in the GCPP? It's uh, dual stack with or without NATs. So, if you have enough public IPv4 addresses, go ahead and give them directly to the, to the terminals, and then have a, have also the IPv6 deployed. So, to get the uh, get more traffic in, in as an IPv6. So. When you actually run out of IPv4 addresses <coughs> to get uh, rid of the NAT latency and stuff like that, just uh, get IPv6 traffic and go to talk with Google, for example, to get some IPv6 uh, uh, traffic into your network. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and that's the last, that's the last point. If the IPv6 only in the GPP network context should be considered when, when you are have already done the dual stack in a, or enabled the dual stack <coughs> because uh, it's, it's easy to enable dual stack because it is there it's just a matter of you turning it on and uh, as an example the Google over IPv6 uh, this was a use case that we did and so made uh, some observations based on the Atlas Internet Observer Report 2009. Uh, <coughs> Google itself represents 6% of all internet traffic. So getting Google uh, services on IPv6 into your network 
and all these terminals are IPv6 capable. That's six percent of your traffic. That's a major, uh, major impact on your NATs. If you think about how many NAT states you are, can, can actually reduce just by simply making a deal with Google, we have an IPv6 connectivity. And uh, then, then again, ten percent of all uh, internet traffic is uh, to CDNs. This is probably not news to you. But uh, one of the biggest CDNs is YouTube, which is owned by Google. So basically, you can get even more traffic into IPv6 as the Google CD, CDN converts into IPv6, which, is, which it is doing. I see somebody said in the head that saying that you don't is actually being able to the moment, so that's not actual at the moment yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then again, if you talk about that, you would need to actually make a deal with uh, all the major internet traffic generators. It would mean that you need to do a deal with 150 different ASNs, which are responsible for 50% of the all internet traffic. So, so to get really IPv6 traffic it is not a problem. It's more or less problem of you acting on on, on the mobile. Thank <laughs> you.